Hi Mart here and today I will show you how to export animation in Krita. Also, well, a lot of things changed before I did my last video on that and also I'm doing this specifically for Windows because most of the people are using Krita on Windows. So I will show you this more precise tutorial on Windows so everyone can do it themselves. Yeah, there might be still some hiccups, so it's not like 100% working for you, but I will try to do my best to cover all the tips and tricks that you should do and to make sure that you're doing before you like start exporting. And I will try to make the chances that this will work for you as high as they can be. All right, so the first thing we have to do is to download the FFM pack because without it, Krita will have no idea what to do with your animation. So you need some kind of encoding software, let's say this way to, or plugin, or how do you want to call it? for Krita, so Krita has some kind of tool to export the animation. For that, you have to go to ffmpeg.org, all right, over here. And on this site, you have to click on download. In more downloading options, select your operating, operating system. For me, it's Windows, for most of you will be Windows. Click on build. And you can select your architecture if it's Windows 64-bit, Windows 34-bit, linking, keep on static. And now you can just download the build. So we'll start downloading. It will take a few seconds. It depends how fast is your internet. You can open it. See, uh, this will be in the, in the zip file. And all we need is this little folder to export it somewhere on your drive. I will put it on my desktop because I'm lazy and I don't want to find any other location. And this is more, <laughs> yeah, normally you would put, you would like to put it somewhere, you know, where, you know, it will stay there. But right now I'm just putting it on my desktop because for the sake of this video. All right, we can close it. Now we have our FFM pack. Let's just check what's inside. We have our bin folder doc preset. In the bit bin folder, we have to check if there is a ffmpeg.exe, this file. That's what we're gonna need to navigate in Krita to get, so Krita can like find this, this file and run it when you need to render your animation or export your animation. All right. So now we have the tool. Now we need our animation in Krita. So let's, let's take our Krita, right? You open your animation. This is like real stupid animation I did in one stream. And it's really simple. It's just this pumpkin. <laughs> That's it. Okay, now we need to somehow, you know, uh, export it. But first, you have to make sure a few things before we start exporting animation. First thing, check your image size. You will just go to image, scale image to new size, and you can check the pixels, right? It's really good to keep your pixels in like video formats. So it's like, you know, 720p, I don't know, 480p, 320p, full HD, or, you know, these like normal formats. And because it will make the compatibility way better. And also, if you're not able to keep those, just make sure that both of these numbers are dividable by two, are like even numbers, all right? That's it, it's what you, that's what you need for this one. Also, uh, if your animation is way too long, it might, uh, your computer might run into issue where that it will reach uh, the memory limit. This might happen. In that case, you can either lower the resolution or go to your settings, configure Krita, come on, configure Krita performance and you can rise up your memory limit. All right, my is on eight gigabytes. It depends on how much RAM you have in your computer. I have 16 gigabytes, so I can go like higher. Uh, I wouldn't recommend to use all like 100% 
I would always use like, I don't know, I would keep like four, two to four gigabytes just for the systems. So I like in my case, I wouldn't go higher than 12 gigabytes. So I would like leave the four for the system. But I didn't really reach that limit yet. So I'm thinking I'm fine with 50% for now. But if this if this will happen in exporting the animation that your system will run out of resources, out of memory, uh, you can like put it a little bit higher here and try it again. And if it will not work, you either can just render it by parts, you know, only like few frames at a time and glue it in other software or uh, lower the resolution of your image. Okay. So the resolution is here in scale image to new size and you just change the resolution. Mine is 720p because I don't really need it any higher <laughs> for this type of animation. Okay. So that's a that's a few things to do before you start exporting. Uh, there's one more that I just kind of found out about one of you kind of told me I think I never really thought about it. But it's good, to, like, you have to have like, background to your animation, you cannot uh, export the animation with like a transparent background. Okay. Yeah, there has to be some background to it. And I would even go as far as like adding the background into the timeline over here. So just like, if it's not there, you know, if I will remove the frame, and I will remove the layer, right, I will just add new layer, make it some kind of background color and I will add the layer to to the timeline and maybe even add like a frame there. Oh, damn. Okay. Like that. So it's actually there and you don't have to like, you know, you're making sure that the uh, background layer is actually like exporting with everything you just did. All right. Because for some reason, the FFmpeg doesn't like the transparent background. Okay. So now we can finally proceed to the export part of this video. So for that, you will go file, render animation over here, click it. I will get this little this little window over here. And you have few few options, right? You have you can do image sequence. You don't really need FFmpeg for this one. It will do just let regularly. You don't really need FFmpeg. It will work anytime you just put it like starting number, first frame, last frame and image like the file like file type you want to use. I'm usually going with PNG because it's it's easy, uh, but make sure if you want to do something with the printing, PNG is not the good one because it doesn't like uh, keep the ICC profile. So I would, if you want like print, I don't, I don't know why would you like print animation, but if you would, you can use like TIFF or JPEG, but your file, like the whole f size of the render rendered frames will be bigger. So make sure of that PNG is like a good for animation. I found and the base name, this will be the name and there will be some number attached to it based on the frame. So you can just, I don't know, do like frame that will make like files that will be like frame, frame zero to frame 35. Or you can do like some different name. I don't know, like if you want to do like image or animation and then there will be like the numbers behind it and that's it. And starting number is starting number and image location, right? That's where you want to put it. Uh, but that's what, what we are not here for this one, right? This one is easy. We want to do the one for the big guys, right? Then we have video and both that kind of combines this one and this one and you can make like both, but we want the video now, right? So we have the resolution. It's taken from the size of the picture. We have the frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. Uh, you can literally put any kind of frame rate in here. Uh, 24 is like a movie like frame rate, you can go 30, you can go even as low as 15 for animation, it doesn't really matter. But if you're gonna like, um, make some kind of later editing, make sure that like, 
you know, your animation has enough frames for your editing, you know, for your purpose. But 24 frames, that means it will take 24 frames and that will be one second, all right? And uh, then we have first frame, last frame as before, and frame and FPS, right? So now we can go to the export, right? But we can't. There's like, we don't have the FFM pack. I think if I will click OK now, the location uh, of FFM pack is unknown. So we have to find the FFM pack. So where is it, right? Well, we put it on the desktop and it's the FFM pack and this stupid number and there's static, right? So open, it should be in a bin and we have the ffmpeg.exe. It's like not the .exe, but it's an application, so we can just select it. Now we see it's the exe. Now we will select the format we want to export it as. Well, it, we have like few options. Matroshka file, which is like uh, MKV. You probably know it if you like ever downloaded any movie or anything like that. Uh, it's really good one. It, it can keep up multiple audio tracks and also it can hold up some metadata and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, it's it's pretty good format. Uh, then we have GIF. It's not Jeff, it's GIF, by the way. <laughs> and classic, you know, for the uh, like internet use or whatever. Uh, you can select it, but it will not have any audio in it. OGG, I'm not really familiar with this one, but you can use it as well. I think it's used for the like web as well, but I'm not sure. Uh, MPEG-4 is like the classic M MP4. It's X264 codec, I think. So we'll keep it on the... Oh, let's say Matroshka, whatever. And we wanted to put it on desktop as well, because why not? So you can see it. And that's all we need. And now we can just hit OK. And it will render our file. Just like that, encoding frames. And now when I look at the desktop, it's on my other screen. Dun, 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 dun. It's over here. I can play it with, let's say, VLC. Eh, oh, eh. Okay, it's over here. See? And it's done, just like that. It's simple as that. You shouldn't have any problems with that, hopefully. And if you had any problems, just leave me a comment under the video and I will try to help you with that. I hope I made it as as easy as possible for everyone to understand. So I hope this will help you and see you in the next one. Mars out. So that was my video. If you liked it, you can leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Or even better, tell me in the comments what should I improve to make it better, I guess. You can also subscribe to my account and also hit the bell icon so you can see when I'm live and when I'm streaming and when I'm uploading new videos. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one.